This is the TP-Link Deco B25, the entry-level Wi-Fi 7 mesh system from the series, and I am going to say it right away, you don't get a 6GHz radio band. There is support for the multi-link operation, and we'll test it in a minute, but know that this is a dual-band mesh system, and the manufacturer did anticipate the potential need of a wired backhaul, so each unit does come with a couple of 2.5 gigabit ports. The wireless backhaul is obviously available as well. Some other interesting features are the backward compatibility with other older gen Wi-Fi systems, and there are some AI-driven features, because of course there are, and hopefully a comprehensive software experience. Now let's talk about the design for a bit. The system is available in up to three identical units, and each unit is pack-shaped. If you expected the LED to be at the top, like on the ubiquity access points, well no, it's a small light near the bottom which lights up various colors to show you the status of the device on the network. Let's now check out the bottom. And we can see a fair amount of ventilation holes and a 4 silicon fit. And near the side we can see the dedicated area for the ports. There's the WPS button followed by the two 2.5 gigabit ports on the power port. As for the thermal management, I anticipated that a small router with limited ventilation holes may run a bit hotter than the traditionally shaped routers. So while running my usual tests, I checked if the units got hot. But they were just warm, and to see the actual temperature, I relied on a thermal camera. You can see for yourself the actual temperature of the Deco B25 while under a bit of stress. I couldn't help myself, so I did open one unit to see what makes it tick, and the teardown process is fairly straightforward. No glue or other intentional barriers, so it is possible to clean and even fix the B25 routers in the future. As for the main components, I could identify the following. I usually divide the Wi-Fi testing section into two, one dedicated to the single client, the other to the multi-client tests. But I'm not going to go through the usual multi-client latency tests due to the time and especially funding constraints. Still, I do have some heat maps generated using Python and ran a few flint instances. Before that, this is the data collected from the single client tests using only the main deco unit. The results are impressive regardless of the channel width when using a Wi-Fi 7 client device, and we can even see that farther away, when the attenuation reaches minus 8 dB, we still get usable throughput. The Wi-Fi 5 client did good as well. And that's true both upstream and downstream. Now let's talk a bit about the heat maps. They're a bit rough because I coded them myself, but to better understand it, know that the house I live in is divided into two main parts vertically, with a thick double wall in the middle. The main Deco B25 unit was positioned on the top floor, where the first portion of the data was collected, while on the ground floor you'll see that the signal is less impressive, just as the throughput. This is a change from my usual graphs, to make it easier to understand the sort of signal and throughput you can expect in your own home. Adding the second Deco router does improve things a lot, properly covering the entire house with Wi-Fi. And you can see the difference between the data depending on the channel bandwidth. It's also worth mentioning that I try to maintain a constant distance between the two units at about 20 meters or 70 feet. And before moving forward, I also included a comparison between the two Deco units and other routers I tested over time. I also had to include a longer term performance graphic. What about the latency? Flint shows that you should not have great expectations of it handling lots of demanding clients, because it won't work well. Use cables where you can and make sure to use Ethernet backhaul between the two units to reduce the latency as much as possible. Moving forward to the 2.4 GHz radio tests, we went through a similar process, just that I used the 40 MHz channel bandwidth. The throughput is decent, more than enough for the current selection of devices that still relies on this radio to communicate with the web. And I also generated a heat map for it as well, including the throughput and the signal attenuation on both floors when using a couple of deco units. Lastly, I had to include a comparison with other wireless routers that I tested over the years. 
I did mention that there is no support for the 6 GHz radio, so the multilink operation aggregation can be done between the 2.4 GHz and the 5 GHz radios. And I did go through the three available channel bandwidths for the 5 GHz radio. The wireless backhaul remains phenomenal between the two DECO units, and after enabling multilink operation, we can see a significant improvement when using the 160 MHz channel width, while minor improvements can be seen in other scenarios. This is true upstream and downstream as well to a certain extent. So yes, it is worth using this feature especially if your clients are farther away from the secondary DECO unit. Now let's talk a bit about the software experience. Ever since the Google Wi-Fi challenged the need of a web interface, most Wi-Fi mesh systems nowadays come only with an app and that's true for the TP-Link DECO B25 as well. And it also means that there is an oversimplification of most features which can frustrate those that prefer to go even a tiny bit more in depth. It's easy to set it up on the surface as long as you're okay with how things are offered to you and don't need to change any settings. If you do, then it's a very frustrating experience. For example, the simple task of having two separate networks, one for the 2.4 GHz and the other for the 5 GHz radio requires enabling the IoT network. I also had some trouble removing DECO units, I found it easier to start a new network from scratch. These are some of the annoyances I encountered. Everything else worked fine. It's easy to switch between the channel bandwidth, enable multilink operation and control what happens with the connected clients. They're also clearly delimited by DECO units which came in handy while testing the system. Other settings include the parental controls, where there is some emphasis on disabling random MAC address creation and you do get the option to block certain websites manually as well as the web filter by category and schedule. And it is enough in most cases, but to gain access to other more advanced features you do need to upgrade to the advanced parental controls, which does require a subscription. There's also the kid shield, which is free while it's in beta mode, and so far it works only with Android. Another important section is the security, which does offer some fairly basic options, such as a blacklist and device isolation, as well as an interesting feature called camera security, which either limits the camera's access to the internet or isolates it completely within the LAN. Again, there are far more advanced features under a separate subscription. Lastly, under more, we can see that there is support for VPN which includes some sponsored services, I assume, as well as OpenVPN, PPTP, as well as IPsec. Under Advanced, I do need to mention that it's possible to enable fast roaming, as well as pinforming. Okay, now that we've reached the end, I can only say that the purpose of the TP-Link DECO B25 Wi-Fi mesh system is to work out of the box, requiring minimum to no configuration and maintenance. And I think it does its job just fine. Plus, the throughput even at the second DECO unit has been impressive. Still, Flint did show some weakness in regards to latency which does mean some applications will require a cabled connection. And there's also the lack of the 6 GHz radio which may be off-putting for some users, while a lot will not care as long as they don't have compatible clients. Then again, the multilink operation also does require client compatibility. That's all for now, thank you for watching and see you next time. Cheers!